Hello everybody, Bill here at Tactical Yakin. Just wanted to walk over a review on a new Vibe kayak that one of our customers brought to us. I'll show you some of the modifications we've done to it. Uh, this is a 10 foot Vibe Yellowfin 100. Okay, this is a brand new 2020 model. And the first thing we did, we went up here on these Well, it's hard to open. Went up here on these and reseal around this rubber seal in here. It didn't really sit that well, so we went ahead and put some silicone down in there and resealed that. We did the same thing on this one back here. Okay, the boat comes with tracks on either side. Okay, then on these rod holders that come with the boat, we replace these screws. The screws they use from the factory are really shallow. Uh, there's probably like maybe two threads that uh, actually grab the plastic, so we replace these with larger screws, and they're flathead screws, so they're not poked up. The screws they, they use were rounded, and they poked up quite a ways, so we replaced those on both sides. All right. Um, we went ahead and gave him the 3600 boxes and made leashes for each one. Okay. And as you can see, we put stabilizers on this. These are our new Gen 5 stabilizers. They're HDPE, they're solid nose cones, solid back, solid back end, and you can see I've got a plug in each one. And people ask me, they say, man, why do you put a plug in there if they're airtight? Well, it's been my experience that no matter how airtight you make something or how watertight you make it, water finds a way. So if anything, these are good for inspection ports, but if, if somehow you punch a hole in it or you get a leak up through here, um, you can drain the water out through here. Okay, we use fiberglass. Uh, I'm sorry, we used furniture grade PVC on all his structure in here. Okay, um, this is really great stuff to work with. It's uh, supposedly five times harder than regular PVC. I don't have any proof of that. It's just what they say, but it does cut a little harder, and uh, it's UV resistant and it's color fast. Okay, now word to the wise, um, it is about three times as much as regular PVC. You have to order it online, but I got to tell you, I think we're probably going to shift to this on all of our kayaks because it's well worth the effort. Um, it just looks a whole lot better. Um, each of these stabilizers is made to come off. So we pull this bolt, pull that bolt back there. This will slip off. Same thing on the other side. And then if you want to take this structure out, you just got to pull this pin here bolt and the same one over there this whole structure will pop out if you want to pull this bar out all you have to do is loosen these four screws just one turn each pull that pin and this bar will come out so the whole thing will come off if you want to take it off um, we did put an electric motor on it which we modified this is pretty standard for you guys at DIY this assembly, but we put one of our stick steering systems on here. We use a push-pull cable, stick steer with a pass-through. Okay, this goes down to our stick right here, and as you can see, it's a nice smooth operation. All right, um, we did have to modify this from the standard one that we sell. We sell these as kits to do this assembly with. Uh, we had to modify this one because the distance between the seat and the back end of the boat was a little shorter than normal. The kits we sell are for 10 foot and 12 foot kayaks, but this was a little shorter, so we went ahead and um, custom built his cable for this particular kayak. Okay, back here are mounting points for our, our stabilizers. We used the rod holders. Uh, we were able to use his factory rod holders. We didn't have to replace these. Usually we have to use Marine Raider rod holders because they'll fit this tubing but uh, we were able to use the factory ones but the ones that come from the factory are, are turned a little bit they're indexed into the boat um, and you can't really use that because you get a weird angle on your on your PVC and you end up putting all sorts of fittings in there and you really don't want to do that because you want this rod to be a pass through this is this is not three pieces this is one solid rod all the way through okay so what we did we uh, took the rod holders out, 
turn them, cut the hole in the boat so that they run straight front to back. And then we built buttress pieces um, for both sides. So this is 3 8 inch HDPE. We put, uh, uh, lost my train of thought there, but this is 3 8 inch HDPE. These are bolted down in four spots. And then we put the rod holder in there. And the rod holder is screwed to this and to the boat itself. So we've got seven attachment points holding this whole structure together. Okay? So that's just nice. And actually the boat's pretty thick right here. So back here in our engine plate, it's 3H inch HTPE. We got an extra plate on top and the motor bolted to that. This is bolted to the boat. This is bolted to this and the bolt. And the motor is bolted to this and the boat. Okay? And you can see our wiring. It just goes down here. And all of our wiring connections are just below the deck right there. So if you ever have to take it off, you can. Uh, I don't honestly see a purpose for ever taking this off. The one thing we did run into on this, this particular boat, for some reason, this area in the stern of the boat, for some reason, uh, the, it's just thinner than the rest of the boat. So we used um, well nuts on the attachment points, and then we used a couple of big anchors here and back here. Um, just to just to give us more confidence in it. I wasn't real confident with the well nuts and that thin uh, material, so we went ahead and just you know made it a little stronger than we typically would. Okay, and here's a good view of the linkage for the steering of the boat and the wiring. Again, also I guess you guys are probably wondering where we put the battery. Let's see if I can get this seat out of here. Battery under the seat, and we also have a bilge pump. Here's our battery switch right here. Let's go to this side over here. Here's our throttle switch and our bilge pump switch. Okay, and I don't have the battery in it right now, so I can show you this. We did replace the typical uh, attachment for this thing with Velcro just to make it a lot easier. But the battery sits nice and tight in there okay and if you look right there that's the mounting point for the bilge pump, pump. The bilge pump is behind this it sits on a nice flat part of the boat right here so that should be just fine okay one other thing we did Vibe offers this padding we went ahead and got this padding in the boat it goes in it's, it's just about a perfect fit you guys if you if you all get a, this padding kit from Vibe, you need to make sure you clean the surface thoroughly. Okay? And the boat comes with a paddle, which is more than adequate for your purposes. We also put the boat on one of our heavy-duty, low-profile carts. Get around this side. Let's see if you can see that. Okay? We rate those at 300 pounds, um, so you can haul your fully loaded kayak pretty much anywhere you want to go. They do have 10 inch tires on them. Um, we also offer the same 10 inch tire that are pneumatic, they're twice as wide. Um, if you decide to have a kayak built by us, or modified by us, and you want those, those pneumatic tires, you need to let us know up front because it may change the distance in the kayak right here. Typically we put these at 48 inches all the way across, but because those other tires are wider, uh, we may need to move these out two inches. So if you order a kayak from us or want mods done, you need to let us know up that up front. All right. Uh, I think the last thing we did, we did change the plug, you know, on these, on these uh, sit on top kayak, kayaks. Typically there's a, a drain plug up front or in back on top of the kayak or both places. Uh, we just move that to blow the keel on the kayak right here so you don't have to flip your kayak over. Um, as far as the motor goes, you can still tilt the motor. Okay? And you can stow it all the way up in the vertical position if you want to. Uh, I think that is about all we've done. 
on this one. Uh, we were going to put a rod holder in up here and move this seat out of the way again. But then we looked at our contract and he hadn't contracted to do that. So we're going to get some bolts to put in here. So in the future, if he wants to put something up here, he can. And these don't fill up with dirt and grime. Okay, so we're going to just put some bolts in there. Um, he didn't put a sonar unit in here and we did not put lights on this. We also offered that. So uh, if you all are interested in getting something done on a kayak like this, and you live in the Dallas area, you can get a hold of us at tacticalyakin at gmail.com. And we'll tell you all about steering system, stabilizers, anything you want done physically to a kayak. We can do it over here. Uh, take used kayaks, new kayaks, whatever you want. We can take care of it. And uh, that is about it, guys. I don't think we did anything. Oh, we did put a did put a anchor trolley on the boat. Okay. Which is just just about have to have on these boats. But uh, if you guys are interested and you don't live in the Dallas area and you're still interested in getting this steering system for your kayak, this is much better than that push, pull, double cable deal that runs down to the foot pegs and all that, that mess. Uh, if you're interested in that, like I said, tacticalyakin at gmail.com. Just write us a letter and we'll get back with you. We've got these available too. If you want to put these on your kayak, we're selling these now. They come 56 inches long. You can cut them down. They're HDPE. They're made of the same material that the kayak is made of. Okay? And these add, at 56 inches long, these add uh, about 100 to 120 pounds of extra buoyancy to the kayak. Okay? And uh, obviously on this yellowfin, which is a really stable kayak to begin with, uh, obviously on this one, this thing's just going to be rock stable with these things on it. And as you can see, they're really streamlined. We put these on most of the kayaks that we build. Um, when you're paddling, you don't even notice these things on here. They're outside of your sweep of your paddle, and they're st real streamlined. Instead of being short, stubby ones like you buy from other aftermarket folks, these are long and streamlined, pretty much the same profile as a torpedo. And uh, they're just low, low drag uh, solution to putting stabilizers on a kayak. Okay? And then you may ask, what are these? This is so we can adjust the height on these. Um, these we've already adjusted, and I've glued this joint. But we'll leave these screws in here. These two, we're going to do a test run tomorrow. We may or may not have to adjust this up or down. So uh, for the moment, they'll be screwed in. And those screws will stay in there even afterwards. Okay? I think that's it, guys. You all have a great week. And don't forget to contact us at tacticalyak at gmail.com. Uh, we can talk kayaks, give you advice, head you in the right direction. That's it. See y'all. Bye.